Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm a Central Texas gardener in zone 8B and we're just coming off a few days of rain here and that has really progressed a lot of things in my garden and I wanted to share that with you. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so this is my Texas red bud and uh, it's been blooming for the last couple of weeks and you can see that it is starting to leaf out and so these red bud blooms are short-lived but they're a great early nectar source for our pollinators and um, it's really this one this texas red bud has these beautiful chartreuse leaves and so i'm looking even though i'll miss the flowers i'm looking forward to this leafing out i have over here a uh, forest pansy or eastern red bud and um, you can see that the flowers didn't stick around quite as long this one's a little bare and it seems like the the leaves on this always take just a bit longer to kind of come in but you can kind of see the color hold on let me see if I can get it to focus so here is roughly what the color of these leaves will be kind of a burgundy to uh, dark purple and they're really pretty again this eastern red bud or forest pansy tends to be a little less sun tolerant than the texas red bud here you can see my mealy blue sages they're just starting to put on blooms here and um, i mean i feel like every time i turn around these things are just getting bigger and bigger and so here's another one and then this one is just covered already in blooms and so um if you are looking for a really good workhorse, I mean, even through the summer, a uh, sage, any, probably any type of sage is going to be a pretty decent bet, but this mealy blue sage is just beautiful. So here you can see, um, I've got a few autumn sages here um, and they are just starting to bloom. And so this is a white one. And then I have got a red one back here and so that'll offer a lot of color in this area once they start going so i wanted to show you the progress of the new garden bed so this is 230 square uh, feet dug by hand not on purpose because i didn't rent a sod cutter but that's what ended up happening um, and so i do plan on completing this spartan juniper hedge with some more um, immature um, junipers once they become available and then I've already seeded um, a bunch of zinnias along that area will they come up I didn't it, it looks like it's all heavily mulched but this this strip here is not so hopefully my zinnias come up and then I have added um, a few perennials over here you can see this is another mealy blue sage so the same exact plant that I just showed you and this is a Russian sage. And so I had a fellow YouTuber recommend uh, these to me and he has not steered me wrong. So thanks for that tip, Lewis Reviews. Um, I did pinch these back. They were quite a bit taller, but I'm wanting to kind of make sure that they um, get a bit fuller. So I, I pinched them back to about half the size they, they um, I bought them in. So here is my emperor one uh, japanese maple and it is just starting to wake up here and so this is um i think this one and the blood good are our two best bets to uh, retain that beautiful red color in our texas heat but um japanese maples in general do not like to be out in the full sun so these are probably better used as an understory or definitely in a shadier area so here between the um, flagstone and then this border i've added this katie ruelia um, can't remember exactly what it's called I think like a petunia and it's a dwarf variety and it doesn't as uh, spread as readily as um, the larger varieties and so I'll just have that kind of growing along this this border here and then here I've got some cedar sage and this is a uh, this flowers in a beautiful red color I think these might get one by two feet in height and spread and so uh, it's my first time using those but again sage is the operative word i mean they have 
really shown themselves very resilient in my garden so I figured I'd give this a try. So my larkspur has woken up and it, it's starting to flower. This is from my friend Yvette. She gave me these seeds and I put them down in the fall and so I'm really enjoying that coming up now and um, you can see all that bee balm. It seems like it's doubled in size over the last week. So here is that golden ball lead tree and you can see that the leaves have unfurled pretty nicely and the flowers are start, they're still pretty green, but they'll turn yellow here in a few weeks. And then I have, again, three more mealy sages here. And again, I feel like they doubled in size just over the last week. So here is that cross vine. You'll remember this from the last video and in just um, one to two weeks it has fully bloomed and it is so pretty. I've seen, I saw my first hummingbird out here um, just yesterday, I believe. And um, I've really enjoyed looking at all the pictures of other people's cross vines because they are performing equally well. So my Bellini crepe myrtle has just now started to leaf out. And this is a dwarf variety, only gets about three by three feet. Has kind of these raspberry colored uh, blooms. So, all right. And then here is that red yucca. And you can see all of those flower spikes. And these are really such a great option for a um, water restricted garden. Um, these flowers, uh, they'll they'll be done I think in the summer but this remains evergreen um, even through the winter so you still have the um, the green spikes there the green leaves that give you um, seasonal interest so and then here's that cross vine sort of from another angle here all right that was just a quick video to give you guys a brief update on how things are progressing um, I hope that you guys enjoyed that and y'all take care.